Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the webinar uh, for the month of June. Today, we're going to be integrating GL Studio content into Mox BR Forces. Uh, this is an open scene graph uh, tool where it'll generate uh, an out the window view, and we're going to bring in GL Studio content uh, to show an updated uh, cockpit display uh, when the simulation is running. So, if we open up the application, uh, I'm just going to open up their example um, saved scenario called Mockland. So, if I open this up, uh, this is going to open up uh, the world view. Now, when I open it up uh, within VR Forces, uh, this is going to show a lot of positional uh, information for different uh, people and vehicles within the scene. Um, it's currently loading right now. I think we have this screen loading in the other screen. Um, so we'll wait here for just a second um, for this to finish loading here. Um, once it does finish loading, you'll see all these different positional coordinates. Um, specifically today, we're going to be focusing uh, on the aircraft within the scene. So the first thing I want to do is change this uh, view mode here uh, to the stealth view mode. So I'm going to select this. Oops, wrong button here. We'll select this to come down to stealth. Uh, this is going to change the view mode, so instead of a top-down view, it has more of a three-dimensional uh, view to the scene. Um, and today, we're going to really focus on... Uh, the 3D aircraft uh, that are within uh, this simulation. So let's go to the fourth one here. I think this was the first one on the runway. So what we can do now is by default, it does come with a couple different uh, GL Studio assets. So if we go to Attach Mimic, we can actually see the interior cockpit. Uh, this is a GL Studio F-16 cockpit RSO um, within uh, VR Forces. Um, so what we want to do today is we want to change this. So instead of it showing this typical F-16 cockpit that it comes bundled with, we want to change it to a different RSO. Uh, so to do that, we're going to change uh, first the visual model editors. Uh, if we come in here to the model definition editor, uh, we can then narrow it down to cockpit displays. This is where all our GL Studio cockpits are. Um, for this one, we're, you're using the fixed wing cockpit for the F-16. Uh, the easiest way if we want to do another fixed wing cockpit is just to duplicate the model definition. Um, and since I'm going to be loading in an MFD um, DLL, I'll just call it underscore MFD and press OK. Now, the first thing that we'll need to do is we're going to actually need to bring in the GL Studio DLL into the specified folder uh, within the mock installation. Um, and this typically installs the C mock VR forces, and then there's a data and a HUD64 um, folder if you install the 64-bit version. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that you will need to make sure that if you install the 64-bit version, you build your DLL um, as a 64-bit DLL. Um, so here I've added a new one. These ones down here below um, are ones that come installed um, with VR Forces. Uh, the one that I want to install today um, is this UAV uh, PFD um, DLL. So uh, we've got that installed already. Uh, I've got this duplicate one called MFD. And what we're going to do now is we're going to first change a couple settings um, within this view. So first we want to change uh, the RSO file name. So instead of this GLS VRV uh, fixed wing, uh, we're going to be loading in the UAV underscore PFD. Um, and then for the RSO name, uh, we'll just change this now. So it's UAV underscore PFD class. Um, another thing to keep in mind, we can adjust the perspective width and height. Uh, I know that this RSO was created uh, with a specified height of 1024 and a width of 1280. So now what this will do is this will load in uh, the RSO into the scene with the appropriate uh, size. Uh, what we want to do now is make sure we match uh, these appropriate attributes um, with uh, the attributes that are available to us um, from VR Forces. Um, so one of them, uh, that would be the yaw. Um, I believe if we come in here, we should be able to change this to attribute. We'll come in here instead of heading. This one's PFD. And, whoops, this one's a little bit different here. That's correct. So we'll come in here for the pitch. This one's a little bit easier. This one's going to be in our PFD class. It's dot pitch. Do the same thing for roll. Uh, 
and then let's change one more. Uh, we can change something like the knots per hour here. Let's change this one to PFD. I believe it's altitude. Or air speed dot air speed. So we'll just leave a couple of those in there for right now. Um, now what I'll do is I'll close this. Um, we've now created a new model definition. Um, so now we can go into the settings, entity type mappings, um, and this we can go to the cockpit settings. So now instead of using a fixed wing cockpit, um, we're going to use that MFD cockpit. So we'll press close. Um, I'll need to detach um, from the view by pressing the Z key, um, and then we can come back in here and attach Mimic again. And now it updates with the new GL Studio RSO. So if we press play, uh, we can let this simulation um, actually play out. I'm going to wait until this engine spools up, uh, and then you can see the altitude uh, rises and it, the pitch um, adjusts, or the, the pitch adjusts appropriately. Uh, so we can connect a lot more data um, later on based upon what kind of information you want to show. Uh, but this kind of just shows how to, how to quickly start um, and update uh, the GL Studio components. Uh, we still have full touch controls um, within the GL Studio asset. Uh, so if you want to, um, you know, add in those extra features, uh, they'll still carry over into this application. Uh, so I hope you guys got a new idea for what you can do uh, with your GL Studio content. Um, check back in next month and we'll show um, some more new features uh, to assist in your own GL Studio development. Thanks.